Meghan Markle claims formal Kate and Prince William found hugging during their first meeting jarring, as she reveals she was barefoot and wearing ripped jeans. Meghan Markle revealed she was barefoot and wearing ripped jeans when she first met Prince William and Kate. The Duchess of Sussex, 41, said she did not know the formality carries through behind closed doors and that she is a hugger, which she did not realize was jarring for some Brits. In the explosive new Netflix docuseries Harry Meghan, the Duchess admitted she was surprised there is a forward-facing way of being and then you close the door. She said, even when Will and Kate came over and I was meeting her for the first time I remember I was in ripped jeans, I was barefoot. Like I was a hugger, I have always been a hugger I didn't realize that is really jarring for a lot of Brits. I started to understand that the formality on the outside carried through on the inside, that there is a forward-facing way of being and then you close the door and think okay we can relax now. But that formality carries over on both sides and that was surprising to me. The couple had been reported to have tried to push it back to 2023 despite the streaming giant paying them a rumored $100 million, 88 million pounds, for the Fly on the Wall series. There have been mixed reports, with the Royals reportedly at odds with production staff on their Netflix docuseries because the panicked couple want to make such extensive edits that the team believe the project could be shelved indefinitely. King Charles and Prince William are poised to issue a swift and robust response to any unjust claims in Harry and Meghan's series, but William and his wife Kate are not likely to watch it themselves, sources have said. Senior royals are said to be bracing for the worst and will be prepared to address any unfounded accusations as the new series drops on the streaming service. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex have already made a number of claims in two trailers released by Netflix in recent days, saying they had no protection from the palace and accused aides of actively leaking and planting stories against them as part of a dirty game. In the bombshell documentary, Harry claims he was brought up by friends in Africa, in fresh attack on Charles. Meghan and Harry shared pictures from Archie's first birthday party, the couple revealed what really happened on their first date. The Sussexes shared unseen photos with their beloved dogs, Meghan lifts the lid on her amazing first Christmas at Sandringham. Netflix show is branded a TV bomb, for the royal family, members of the Sussexes now defunct household are also said to be seething with rage over trailers for the six-part documentary. Officials from both Buckingham and Kensington Palace will watch the first three episodes of the series on Thursday morning. But it is understood that the Prince and Princess of Wales will refuse to watch the first three episodes of the documentary. An insider also told The Sun that the royals are reluctant to engage in a tit-for-tat battle over the series.
They said, if there are parts which are blatantly wrong, then it is only right that they are corrected. The trailers already have some glaring errors and misrepresentations, which doesn't bode well for the full series. But the plan is to keep Shtam and carry on, but sources told the newspaper they are unlikely to respond until the full series has been released, due next Thursday. Aides are understood to have been briefed by the King and Prince of Wales to issue a swift and robust response if required. If there is a need to respond to anything in the upcoming series then you can be assured that response will be swift and robust, the source said. It is understood that Netflix offered a right of reply to senior royals to allow them the chance to respond to any allegations featured in the series. But Buckingham and Kensington Palace both deny receiving any such approach. Harry and Meghan, meanwhile, have vowed it is just the beginning and have earlier spoken of sweeping down walls of oppression. But Netflix's use of misleading footage in two trailers for the series would not have been tolerated by British broadcasters, according to producers. Former BBC and Channel 4 commissioning editor Peter Grimsdale said lawyers would have intervened before the trailer was released. He told The Times, it's almost hardwired into us to make sure we know where every shot comes from because that's the sort of thing that if there was complaints about it, you would be in real trouble. There's a certain duty of care. I think people working for Sky would feel the same way. It's partly a function of regulations just being different in America, Mr. Grimsdale added, 99. Nine percent of the time this doesn't happen because everyone checks, it comes after the Sussexes faced an awkward grilling from journalists about their explosive documentary in New York. Harry and Meghan were asked if they were putting money before family as they graced a star-studded gala hosted by the Robert F. Kennedy Human Rights Organization, where they received an award for fighting racism in the royal family. The pair did not give a direct response, but the Duke could be heard saying so many questions before they were escorted inside. Earlier, they told the ceremony that their war against oppression has only just begun. Harry and Meghan delivered the politically charged pre-taped remarks after being honored with an award for fighting racism in the royal family by the Robert F. Kennedy Human Rights Foundation, a prize that counts Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton among its former recipients. Meghan also talked about her struggle with suicidal thoughts since becoming a member of the royal family, telling the audience she didn't want to be alive anymore and revealing that the decision not to end her life wasn't easy, in remarks echoing those made during her bombshell interview with Oprah Winfrey. In a speech praising the late RFK, the Duke of Sussex told the star-studded Ripple of Hope Gala, as we all face a complete and challenging time in the world, we choose the path of optimism of care for each other and our communities.
We understand this honor, not about the culmination of a life's work, but instead and in many ways for us, a beginning. He said, Bobby Kennedy said, each time a man stands up for an ideal or acts to improve the lot of others or strikes out against injustice, he sends forth a tiny ripple of hope. His wife said, the enduring dream of RFK of a just and peaceful world is so much more than a simple hope. It's a direct ask, a specific challenge, a call to action, a test of individual courage and collective spirit. And his appeal to humanity is as relevant today as it was in 1966 when he stood before the University of Cape Town, a place we've visited and hold close to our hearts. And he delivered a vision for the common good of society, he also said those ripples build a current which can sweep down the mightiest walls of oppression and resistance. Just six months after the couple set up home in California in March 2020, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle announced a shiny new deal with Netflix, saying they wanted to provide hope and inspiration by teaming up with the streaming Goliath. The Duke and Duchess said their company, unnamed at the time but now known as Archwell Productions, would make documentaries, feature films, scripted shows and children's programming. In a statement, the Sussexes said, our focus will be on creating content that informs but also gives hope. As new parents, making inspirational family programming is also important to us. They added that Netflix's unprecedented reach will help us share impactful content that unlocks action. Ted Sarandis, Netflix chief content officer and co-chief exec, said at the time, we're incredibly proud they have chosen Netflix as their creative home and are excited about telling stories with them that can help build resilience and increase understanding for audiences everywhere. After putting ink to paper on the deal, the Sussexes were said to have welcomed cameras into their luxury Montecito mansion for a reality-type documentary, Page Six reported. While it's unclear on exactly how much of their home life the couple were prepared to share, they certainly did let Netflix cameras trail them on public appearances in 2021 and 2022. When Harry and Meghan jetted to the Global Citizen Live event in New York in late September 2021, a camera crew accompanied them. And just over six months later in The Hague, in April this year, the Duke and Duchess were filmed at the Invictus Games, hugging Team United Kingdom competitor Lisa Johnston and meeting competitors and chatting to the crowds. One of the organizers at the event said the Netflix team arrived in six people carriers with caseloads of equipment. The film crew were given maroon bibs to help them stand out from the dozens of photographers covering the games and given exclusive access to the couple with behind closed door meeting with the athletes. However, when it came to the Queen's Jubilee in June, just a few months before the late monarch died on September 8, the couple were firmly told they wouldn't be able to film while attending the celebrations.
Indeed, Meghan and Harry took a low-key role in the national event, missing out on key moments on the balcony of Buckingham Palace, which only senior roles were allowed to attend. Even before its release, the show has made waves on both sides of the Atlantic and it is expected to cause fresh turmoil for the royal family. Harry also has his memoirs, named Spare, on the way. Royal experts have claimed in recent weeks that these two bombshell projects will further set back any prospect of a meaningful reconciliation between the couple, who live in a $14.65 million Montecito mansion with their two children, Archie, 3, and Lilibet, 1, with King Charles and Prince William.